If you're someone who keeps an eye out for tech trends in the JavaScript ecosystem, you probably would have come across ShadCN UI Competence. It's available on the website called ui.shadcn.com. I hope I'm saying the name right. I'm not really sure, but at least for me, it sounds like shadcn.com. They are a super nice collection of competence, which you can install and set up with your Next.js apps. But sadly, they are not a comparable library as it says on the website itself. And interestingly, I came across this conversation between uh, Theo and Shatsian on Twitter. They were talking about how the Shatsian competence are a perfect starter for a team wanting to build a comparable library from scratch. And I was thinking to myself, why can't I build a comparable library on top of Shatsian UI components and talk about it? And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We are going to build a Combinal library from scratch using the Shatsian UI component. Before we start building a Combinal library, let's get some things clear. A Combinal library needs to have the following criteria. The Combinal API needs to be simple and extensible. You need to design your Combinal library based on an extensible pattern. The base variant pattern is a great example of such pattern. The Combinal library should be tree shakeable. If an app is consuming our Combinal library, imagine our Combinal library has got five components and the app that's consuming our Combinal library only imports two components. In the final build of the app, only the components that they imported from our Combinal library should be part of the final bundle. The components that they did not import from our library should not be part of the final bundle of the app. Your component style should be overridable. For example, if the app is consuming a component called button and they have variant called primary on top of the button, they want to change the text color of the specific primary button. They should be able to do that. Your component library bundle should be as small as possible. This can be achieved by externalizing some of the dependencies that your host app can install on its own and also marking some of the dependencies as peer dependencies and not including them in your final bundle. Now that you've gotten the criteria for the Combinal library out of the way, let's code our library together. Don't be concerned if you're not able to follow the code. I have attached a link to the GitHub repo in the description below. You can go take a look and play around with it. For this library, we are going to use the Vt Tailwind template uh, that's built on top of React and TypeScript. So we're gonna copy this npm create command and replace the react with react ts. This will create a vite based tailwind template with react and TypeScript. And now that's ready, let's go ahead and CD into our library and do the rest of the instructions given here. We're simply going to follow all the instructions given in this template and try to go through all of them one by one. Now we are at step four. We're simply going to copy this CSS content into our index.css file. The template we just made is made for an app. Since we are building a library, we're going to clean up all the things we don't really need. For example, the assets folder, we don't need app.tsx files, we don't need an app.tsx files, we don't need. So we're going to remove all of them and also we're going to remove the main.tsx file along with the vite.env.d.ts file as well. Instead, we're going to create one file called index.ts at the root and that's the file that's going to be our entry point. Let's go ahead and look at the installation instructions for our Shatsi and UI components. Since we are not using a Next.js app, we would have to install everything manually. First, let's go ahead and install our NPM dependencies. We're not gonna follow the step number two as we don't really need a path alias in our project. We 
we're going to go to step number three and copy the Tailwind configuration of the Shad CN into our Tailwind config.js. Once that's done, let's go ahead and copy the global.css file's contents into our index.css file. And finally, let's go ahead and copy the contents of the utils.ts and make a folder under src called utils and copy all the contents of the utils.ts into our own utils.ts. Now let's go ahead and add our first component. This component requires a component from the Radix UI library. So first let's go ahead and install the component from the Radix UI React slot. Once that's done, let's copy the button component into our components folder and give the name as button.tsx and adjust the path for the lib. And let's go ahead and export all the entities of the button.tsx into our index.ts file. Let's go ahead and fix the content field of our Tailwind config.js and also add dark class to the safe list. This would make sure that Tailwind would include dark class as part of its final bundle, even when the dark class is not used in any of the React components. Let's go ahead and install this tool called PostGSS CLI. What this does is this would take our index.css as an input and generate an output called style.css at our this folder. And the script's called build styles. Let's go ahead and run the script to see what the output looks like. Let's take a look at the output at style.css. You can see that we have classes called text primary and text primary foreground. These are the classes that are being used in our button component. As I said, Tailwind CSS will only include the classes in the final bundle if they are used by your components. The classes that are not being used by the components will not be part of the final bundle. Now we're going to replace our tsconfig.json file into our own tsconfig.json file that we have for our libraries. The last three fields are pretty important for us because it tells TypeScript where to generate the declaration files and if it should generate the declaration files or not. Now let's build the Vite configuration for our library. Right before we build our Vite configuration, let's go ahead and install Vite DTS plugin. This will enable us to bundle all our declaration files into one file at index.d.ts. So this is our Vite configuration for our library. I would walk through all the fields one by one so that you can understand what all of them mean. The first field is uh, the plugin for React and I have passed a parameter called JSX Runtime Classic because this enabled me to make the bundles a bit smaller so that's the reason why I've added this and it should also work without this field so it's optional. And the next one is DTS and then we have our build option. Inside build options we have to specify the entry that is our index.ts file. And then we have to specify the formats in which we want the outputs in. And then comes the file name of how your file should be named in our disk folder. And then we come into the rollup options where you can see that there is a field called external where we would mark all our peer dependencies and our dependencies as part of the external field. What this will do is that this will make sure that our peer dependencies and dependencies are not part of final build of the library. And there is this one more field that is important for tree shaking and that's called preserve modules. 
When this field is combined with our side effects field from packet.json, then it's going to make our library tree shakeable. If you take a look at the packet.json, we've got some few fields that we have added. We've got type, we've got main, and we've got module, and we've got types field. All these fields are self-explanatory. And there is this other field called side effects false. Normally, if our CSS files are part of our library bundle, then we would mark the CSS files as side effects here. But since our CSS files are being generated by another post CSS CLI tool, they would anyways be part of the disk folder and we don't really have to mark them as side effects here. Now let's go ahead and add another component called alert from Shadsy and Confidence. and then run npm run build to see if our library is bundling is expected. Now that our library is bundling is expected, we need to test if this actually works. So for that, we are going to make a new folder called examples. And in that folder, we're going to add another Vite Tailwind based app to test our library to see if this actually works or not. Let's use the same template that we use for our library because the template is meant for an app. We would go ahead and install all the relevant instructions that we have to and create our app. We will copy the index.css file into our app. And make sure that everything looks as expected. Now let's link our library to our app. We have imported the style CSS file and also we have imported the button component. Let's go ahead and build our dark mode toggle. We have a button to toggle between light and dark modes. This toggling would simply apply the dark mode class on the parent of the Shatsy and UI components and this would apply all the relevant dark mode colors. Ooh, something has failed. Um, all right, I think we have a problem with the namings of our index.css file. So it should be style.css file. And also we have to import use state hook from react library before we start over again. And let's make some minor adjustments to center all the content to the center of the page. Right now it looks pretty good and the toggle dark mode is working as expected. We have also overridden the class name of the destructive variant button. Right now, we're going to do a build of the app to see if we have the button in the build. But here you can see that we have only the button component and not the alert component. That means our library is tree shakeable. I'm going to go ahead and add the alert component and do a build again just to check if the alert component is part of the final bundle of the app. Let's go ahead and build our app again, just to see. Now the build contains alert component and also the button component both. 
and the Tailwind CSS build also contains only the CSS that we have used in our app and not the CSS that we haven't really used in the app. Let's go back to the app and see if the overriding is working as expected. I'm going to change the text from orange to green and rebuild my app again. And you can see that the overriding classes are being applied as expected. So our component library is also overridable. If you're using your component library in an existing Tailwind CSS app, uh, there may be instances of class name clashes between your app and your library. In that case, what you can do is you can add a prefix to your library's Tailwind config and apply the prefix to all the class names that you use in the library. For example, if you use a prefix called UI dash, then that prefix will be applied to all the class names that you've used in all the components of the library. Tailwind CSS applies a base CSS by default in order to have some specific CSS classes across your apps. If you want to apply your own base CSS, then what you can do is you can go to the Tailwind config and add a specific field called core plugins. And inside the core plugins, you will find another field called pre-flight and make it false. So this would make sure that the base uses of the Tailwind will not be applied in your app. Rather, you can bring in your own base user styles. Here is the GitHub repo, it's got everything that we talked about. It's got the library starter kit and also it's got the example app. Um, you can go read the instructions and play around with it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.